The Life of T'Challa King T'Challa was the king of Wakanda and the eldest child of T'Chaka and Ramonda, who was chosen to be the holder of the Black Panther mantle. Following the death of his father in the bombing orchestrated by Helmut Zemo, T'Challa had to set out to kill the Winter Soldier, who was widely believed to be responsible for the attack. During his attempt to find the Winter Soldier, Black Panther had joined a civil war between the Avengers where he sided with Iron Man. However, when T'Challa learned that Zemo was the one who had been responsible for his father's demise, he captured Zemo and handed him over to Everett Ross. Upon returning to Wakanda, T'Challa was officially crowned king. Black Panther was then called upon by the Avengers as they had uncovered Thanos' plan to claim all six Infinity Stones. However, Wakanda was then invaded by Thanos' forces, who ultimately overpowered the Wakandans as Thanos completed his goal of wiping out half of life, killing Black Panther as a result. However, Black Panther was resurrected five years later by Hulk, as he then joined the Avengers in a final battle against an alternate Thanos, ending in the Avengers' victory. Following this, T'Challa returned to his kingdom and reunited with his sister and mother, but he later unexpectedly passed away from an unspecified illness but his legacy as the Black Panther was carried on by his sister, in addition to leaving behind a son that he had conceived with Nakia. Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, we just released some brand new merch. If you'd like to show your support for the channel even further while at the same time repping stylish clothing, be sure to check that out as well. The store is linked below. YouTube's been unsubscribing users from channels lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Amagi. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Raised in Wakanda T'Challa was born in Wakanda, an isolationist country located in Africa, to the reigning monarch T'Chaka and his wife Ramonda. He eventually had a younger sister named Shuri. Training for all of his life to take his father's place as the next Black Panther, T'Challa grew into a man with a highly active mind and despite T'Chaka's best efforts, a great dislike for politics. Becoming the Black Panther in 2009, his father would pass the mantle of Black Panther to T'Challa after reaching a certain age. One week after becoming the protector of Wakanda, T'Challa, as the Black Panther, was sent with Okoye to save Wakandan hostages from Xanda and Douglas Scott. Black Panther took on Xanda as Okoye retrieved the hostages and was shot in the shoulder by her vibranium bullets. Before she could kill him, however, Xanda moved to shoot the fleeing hostages, giving Black Panther the chance to overpower her and ensure the hostages escaped. Once the police stormed the building, the mercenaries fled, with Black Panther deciding to pursue them in his aircraft. Following them to a yacht, Black Panther and Okoye took out the mercenaries and then confronted Xanda and Scott, with Black Panther killing Xanda by igniting one of her grenades and saving Okoye by dropping a metal bar on Scott's hands. Assassination of T'Chaka T'Challa and T'Chaka attended the conference at the Vienna International Center in Vienna, Austria. They met Natasha Romanoff there, and T'Challa spent time speaking with Romanoff, where they discussed the Accords and their shared discomfort of such political meetings. T'Challa commented on the fact that the last time Romanoff was in such company, she had just exposed S.H.I.E.L.D.'s secrets during the Hydra uprising. Claiming her dislike for politics made him happy to have seen her there. Being comfortable with Romanoff, T'Challa expressed his opinion on the Accords, saying he approves of it, but the politics were something he was not fond of. Exemplifying two people in a room can get more done than a hundred. They were then interrupted by T'Chaka, who had teased his son and greeted Romanoff, noting that Captain America had decided not to attend as he disagreed with the control the Accords would put on his and the Avengers' actions. Once Romanoff had taken her seat, T'Chaka then expressed his pride of seeing his son's skill at politics is getting better, thanking each other for their support during this difficult time for Wakanda's future. During the conference, T'Challa watched as his father then gave a speech about Wakanda's dark history and unfortunate involvement in the creation of deadly weapons made with vibranium, using these as his reasons for signing the Accords. Upon hearing the commotion outside, T'Challa realized danger was incoming, but was too late to stop his father being killed in a terrorist attack that was orchestrated by Helmut Zemo, under the disguise of Bucky Barnes. While the fire was being put out, T'Challa mournfully took his late father's ring, hunting the Winter Soldier. While considering his next actions, T'Challa was greeted by Natasha Romanoff, who expressed her own grief at T'Chaka's sudden death, and informed him that the Joint Counter-Terrorist Center would decide who was responsible with apprehending Barnes. T'Challa, however, then informed Romanoff that he intended to find and kill the Winter Soldier himself. T'Challa put on the Panther habit in order to avenge his father's death. He then quickly managed to track the Winter Soldier down to where he had been hiding in Bucharest, where he fiercely attacked him. 
Despite being momentarily shocked by the arrival of such an unexpected enemy, the Winter Soldier quickly got to his feet and began fighting Black Panther, but was overpowered by T'Challa's furious attacks. Using the incredibly sharp claws on his suit, Black Panther slashed at his enemy and tried to kill him, eventually pinning him to the ground and attempting to stab his target through the throat. When all hope looked lost for the Winter Soldier, their battle finally stopped when a GSG-9 helicopter fired on Black Panther, with his own vibranium suit saving him. The Winter Soldier then attempted to escape by running off the side of the building only for Black Panther to follow, grinding down the building's side. While the Winter Soldier attempted to escape by running on foot, the Black Panther hunted and chased Barnes down through a long traffic tunnel, pursued himself by Captain America and Falcon who were now attempting to aid the Winter Soldier's escape. Black Panther charged through the tunnels as his enhanced speed allowed him to run past cars as he began to gain on the Winter Soldier. When Rogers commandeered a GSG-9 car to try and catch up to Barnes, who was escaping on a stolen motorbike, Black Panther jumped onto the back of the car to gain extra speed as well as jumping on the back of Falcon and flying through the tunnel, trying several times to knock Barnes off the motorcycle he was riding, but finding that Barnes' prosthetic arm gave him an advantage as he was grabbed by the throat, but T'Challa soon recovered. Eventually, Barnes reached the end of the tunnel and tried to use an explosive to block their way, only for Black Panther to leap through the blast and slice through Barnes' tires, causing his own bike to crash. Although Rogers stopped him from killing Barnes, they were all soon captured when War Machine and an entire police squad arrived and surrounded them, to which he unmasked and revealed himself as the King of Wakanda to the surprise of everybody. Held by Everett Ross The police apprehended them all, who were now fugitives due to the new Sokovia Accords. The group was then brought into Berlin in an armored car to await their own punishments for the chaos they caused. Along the way, T'Challa explained to Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson the history of the Black Panther and why he'd targeted Bucky Barnes. While he desired to avenge T'Chaka and vowed that Rogers would not be able to keep Barnes safe from him for long. The group arrived at the Joint Counter-Terrorist Center building and were soon greeted by Sharon Carter and her boss Everett Ross. While Barnes was locked up in a maximum security prison of the German anti-terror police force GSG-9, T'Challa was also brought into their custody and saw Captain America's shield and XO-7 Falcon being taken away. When Rogers questioned what would happen to Barnes, he was told that he would be questioned by Ross's own men before being taken away to begin his sentence which T'Challa seemed to agree with. Ross then explained that while he was there, T'Challa would be provided with an office rather than a prison cell to stay in. While awaiting news on what would happen with the Winter Soldier at the Joint Counter-Terrorist Center building, T'Challa was visited by Natasha Romanoff, who expressed her surprise at his secret identity, citing that this now placed him under the Accord's jurisdiction. T'Challa noted he wanted to move on so he could take Barnes to Wakanda. As Romanoff claimed this would be unlikely, Everett Ross confirmed T'Challa had been granted Barnes' extradition. Hunting Bucky Barnes T'Challa waited as Winter Soldier was questioned by Helmut Zemo posing as the psychiatrist, Theo Brossard. However, while T'Challa, Everett Ross, and the Avengers watched the questioning unfold, the power was shut off. Sensing that a more sinister plan was unfolding involving the Winter Soldier who may be attempting to escape, T'Challa then went to investigate the incident further himself. Heading downstairs as chaos was erupting throughout the building, T'Challa discovered the Winter Soldier had escaped and was fighting against Natasha Romanoff and Sharon Carter, who had, in turn, tried to save Tony Stark from the Winter Soldier's fury. Charging in before the clash could prove fatal, T'Challa managed to save Romanoff from being strangled by the Winter Soldier and engaged in a one-on-one -on -one fight with his enemy, determined to not let him escape. While they began to fight each other, it was clear that T'Challa was not scared and proved to be lethal as a Hydra assassin, although the soldier was able to use his prosthetic arm to gain an advantage with strength, managing to knock T'Challa to the ground and tried to get away, although T'Challa soon got to his feet and re-engaged with the Winter Soldier. Seeing his Wakandan royal ring seemed to have some strange effect onto the Winter Soldier's prosthetic arm. T'Challa refused to allow his father's killer to escape and continued fighting, furiously striking against him before kicking him down the stairs. Once the pair continued their duel, T'Challa managed to gain the upper hand and knocked him off the balcony easily. However, losing sight of the soldier proved to be a dangerous mistake, as T'Challa leaped down to re-engage with his target, only to suddenly discover that the Winter Soldier had managed to get away. When T'Challa learned from his attaché that the Winter Soldier had escaped from the building, seemingly with the help of Steve Rogers, he decided to use Wakanda's many resources to track him down. On his way out, he was stopped by Natasha Romanoff, who came close to fighting Ayo, his security chief. T'Challa spoke to Romanoff politely and explained his current plan. However, Romanoff offered him a new alternative, to join Stark's team of Avengers in finding and capturing Rogers along with the Winter Soldier for Thaddeus Ross. Knowing that this would prove to be a much faster method of finding and killing his target, T'Challa agreed to join Stark's team. Clash of the Avengers 
Having joined Iron Man's side, Black Panther eventually found and ambushed Captain America at the Leipzig Halle airport, greeting Rogers with respect while Stark continued to argue about the Sokovia Accords, while Spider-Man arrived and took away his shield to ensure that he could not fight back. As Stark tried to convince him to surrender himself over to the Joint Counter-Terrorist Center for interrogation. T'Challa teamed up with War Machine during the fight, but they both proved to be bested by Captain America, who fought them both off while disarming War Machine's weapons. The fight was stopped when Captain America and Ant-Man used a Pym Particle Disc to enlarge and throw a large fire truck towards T'Challa, War Machine, and Black Widow. Much to their annoyance as both T'Challa and Widow managed to dodge the explosion, while Rhodes was hit full force, knocking him painfully backward. As Rogers and the rest of his team attempted to make their way to the Avengers Quinjet to make their escape from the airport, their path was soon stopped by Vision, who used the Mind Stone to block their path. T'Challa joined the rest of Iron Man's teams as the two opposing sides later gathered up the charge against their former allies. T'Challa first targeted the man he was desperate to get revenge on and who was seemingly responsible for the terrorist attacks. During the fight, Winter Soldier tried to convince T'Challa that he wasn't the one who murdered T'Chaka, but T'Challa only questioned why he had run away if he was innocent. He almost succeeded in killing the wrong suspect as he pulled away from his prosthetic arm and then attempted to cut his throat, but Scarlet Witch intervened and stopped his claws from reaching Barnes, and threw T'Challa a distance with her powers, hitting a jet bridge. Losing his targets Later, T'Challa spotted both Captain America and the Winter Soldier attempting to escape with a Quinjet, which was inside the hangar, but Giant Man held him and all the rest of Iron Man's team back. When keeping Spider-Man, Iron Man, and War Machine away from his team, Ant-Man kicked a bus at T'Challa only to be saved at the last second by Vision intervening and blocking the bus with his own vibranium body. With Vision's help, T'Challa was able to elude Ant-Man and reach the Quinjet hangar. Before he could do so, Hawkeye tried keeping T'Challa at bay by firing many of his explosive arrows directly at him. T'Challa dodged many of the arrows and caught two before they exploded right in his face, angering him enough to fight Hawkeye by showing him his vibranium claws unleashed from his own panther habit, as the Black Panther prepared to fight his legendary attacker. Seeing that his current fighting technique was not working and still attempting to ensure his allies escape, Hawkeye turned his bow into a bow staff and introduced himself to T'Challa since they had never been introduced before this point, with the latter replying that he did not care who he was fighting. The pair started fighting one another until T'Challa broke his staff in half and knocked Hawkeye out of the fight before continuing his pursuit to the Quinjet hangar. Despite the best efforts of Vision to block them, Rogers and Barnes reached the hangar due to Scarlet Witch's interference. Panther came close to them only to be stunned multiple times by Black Widow's Widow Bite, allowing Rogers and Barnes to escape, despite T'Challa trying to get a hold of the Quinjet. Romanoff claimed that she had only promised to help him find them, but not kill them. T'Challa was furious with her and later reported her betrayal to Thaddeus Ross, who initiated a manhunt. Capturing Helmet Zemo Having had a meeting with Thaddeus Ross on board of the Raft Prison where he had a top secret meeting with Falcon, Tony Stark discovered the location of the now fugitives Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Once Stark had put on his Iron Man suit and went to find them, T'Challa secretly followed Stark while on board his jet towards Siberia, where the Winter Soldier Laboratory was located. T'Challa then successfully infiltrated the buildings with the plan to kill Barnes, following close behind as Iron Man had made peace with Rogers. However, T'Challa overheard the conversation between Rogers and Helmet Zemo, in which he had confessed to killing all the other Winter Soldiers, and admitted to framing Barnes for the Vienna bombing. Having learned this truth and that he had been hunting the wrong person, Black Panther focused his efforts on Zemo himself. While Zemo rested on top of a hill outside the missile bunker, certain that he had succeeded in pitting Iron Man and Captain America against each other, T'Challa quietly confronted him. Zemo explained to T'Challa the reason for his crimes. His family had been among the casualties of the Battle of Sokovia, and he wanted to tear the Avengers apart as revenge. Zemo also admitted that T'Chaka's death was not intended and apologized for it, saying that T'Chaka was a good man and had a dutiful son. Recognizing his own rage in Zemo and seeing how vengeance had consumed not only Zemo but Stark and himself, T'Challa decided to spare Zemo and even stopped him from committing suicide, using his vibranium-protected hand to block the gunshot, telling Zemo that he still needed to answer to the living for his crimes. Binding his prisoner, T'Challa reunited with Rogers and Barnes, telling Barnes that he had assets in Wakanda that could remove all Hydra's programming in his mind. T'Challa then handed Zemo over to Everett Ross for punishment. King of Wakanda A week after his father's death at Helmet Zemo's hands, T'Challa was preparing to be formally crowned king. However, T'Challa decided to retrieve Nakia from her current war dog's mission as he wished for her to be present during his coronation. Picked up by Okoye in the Royal Talon Fighter, the two flew to Nigeria where Nakia was located. Preparing for his mission and equipping his panther habit, T'Challa used one of the tablets to look at where Nakia and the missing Chibok girls were located. 
informed by Okoye that they were heading for the border of Wakanda. He was then given EMP beads to disable their kidnappers' vehicles, but before he was dropped down to the field, Okoye told him not to freeze when he sees Nakia, remarking that he never freezes. Holding himself with a Wakandan pose, T'Challa dropped through the Royal Talon fighter, diving through the air and looking down to see the Boko Haram group driving to their destination. T'Challa sends EMP beads downwards onto their trucks, immediately delivering a powerful EMP blast which forced all the vehicles to stop and made them unable to start again. Taking the opportunity, T'Challa landed on a tree and stealthily waited until traffickers approached him. As the traffickers noticed the trucks were hit by an EMP, they regrouped. They split up until one of them found a dog barking. Suddenly, T'Challa was spotted and attacked the man, instantly knocking him down. T'Challa then began to fight against several traffickers with guns shooting at him, but was impervious to bullets, leading him to defending them off one by one. While fighting, T'Challa paid attention to one particular soldier, who was ready to kill on sight, but Nakia stopped him and told him that that shooter was just a boy and was kidnapped alongside the women who were there as well. T'Challa took a moment to look at Nakia, having her attention, only to simply greet her. Wanting to talk to her, T'Challa gets interrupted by another man, threatening to shoot one of the women, only for him to get killed by Okoye. Since Okoye killed the shooter with her vibranium spear, T'Challa was teased by her for his lack of focus, leading him to freeze. T'Challa took off his mask and looked towards Nakia, and she told them that they ruined her mission. But T'Challa took it urgently in order to tell her that his father was dead and that he is going to be crowned as king the next day. Nakia accepted his invitation and they walked together to the royal talent fighter, saving the kidnapped women and a child soldier. Upon the horizon, T'Challa and Okoye succeeded in their mission and headed home to Wakanda with Nakia. As the sun rises from above, T'Challa was comforted by Nakia as he was deeply saddened by his father's death. While getting together, Okoye announced their arrival as they flew by the border and into the holographic dome, reaching Wakanda's capital known as the Golden City. Coronation Upon arriving at Golden City, T'Challa was greeted by Ramanda and Shuri, who held great expectations for him as the new heir. As Nakia left to go to her tribe, Shuri asked Okoye if T'Challa froze during his mission, to which Okoye responded with a resounding insult, much to T'Challa's dismay. As the Dora Milaje left, T'Challa greeted Shuri and asked for EMP beads. He was then updated on a new habit, only for him to be in disbelief, resulting into some banter with Shuri about her inventions. T'Challa remarked at Shuri as she left with EMP beads that he cannot wait for what update she would bring to her invention. Upon receiving a middle finger from Shuri, T'Challa asked how she's feeling, to which she responded by saying that she was proud, noting his father and her were talking about the coronation all the time, missing him. She told T'Challa that he is with them, but now it was time for him to be crowned as King of Wakanda. As the four tribes of Wakanda arrive the next day, after a ceremonial celebration of the prince's coronation, T'Challa prepares himself inside the royal talent fighter and walks into the arena of Warrior Falls. Zuri came to explain the challenge and went off to give T'Challa a potion to let the powers of the Black Panther be stripped away, leading him to feeling nauseous, quickly recovering from it. Once the challenge became fair, Zuri asked every tribe from any royal bloodline to fight for the throne, only for all of them to decline to challenge the throne. Shuri then raised up her hand and told Zuri that her dress is feeling uncomfortable and asked for her and the rest of the people to go home, only to be mocked for the public. The Jabari tribe, led by M'Baku, arrived to challenge for the throne, ranting about how Wakanda has progressed and how the prince of the country couldn't keep his father safe. While outright mocking T'Challa and his father, T'Challa willingly accepted M'Baku's challenge. As they prepare for their intense duel, T'Challa put on a panther mask and was guarded behind the Dora Milaje while M'Baku did it with his own tribe. They began to fight each other as they threw multiple blows that resulted in each other getting hit or dodging with each swing of their weapons. As their fight began to be difficult towards T'Challa, M'Baku then broke his weapons during the duel. As they began trading blows, only for T'Challa to be caught off guard in his grasp. Severely wounded, M'Baku was mocking him for being just a boy without his mantle, but his family cheered him on, leading him to fight back. Getting impaled afterward, T'Challa yelled at M'Baku that he is who he is and proceeded to remove the blade and attacked M'Baku with a chokehold. Despite pinning him down, T'Challa decided to spare M'Baku, saying that his people need him, and yelling at him to yield before he died. Once M'Baku forfeited, T'Challa took a breath to finally recover from his injuries. As the crowd goes wild with excitement and his family supports him, T'Challa was crowned as King of Wakanda. Branding himself with Bashenga's necklace, T'Challa hugged Zuri as he thanked him and was remarked as a king. Visiting his father Following his challenge for the throne, T'Challa went to the cave where his ancestors gained the power of the Black Panther, with many women and children setting up the ceremony and giving him the heart-shaped herb for consumption. 
As T'Challa lay down on the ground, Zuri gave him the potion of the herb, letting him consume it. While manifesting his powers, T'Challa was buried deep in the sand as his body began to quickly dissolve due to the side effects of the herb. On the ancestral plane, T'Challa woke up from the sand he was buried in and noticed that on the plane was a grassland field with a purple skyline, noticing a group of Black Panthers on top of a tree. As one approached, turning into his father, T'Challa became incredibly shocked at the sight of him. He hugged him as he cries for his forgiveness and kneeled down before him, only to get a remark from him being a king of Wakanda. Once he picked himself up to talk to his father, T'Challa told him that he wasn't ready to be king just yet, but T'Chaka told him that he trained and studied all his life to be king. T'Challa told his father that that's not what he was talking about, telling him he was not ready to be king without his father, leading T'Chaka to tell him that he is a good man with a good heart, and it's hard for a good man to be a great king. With that revelation, T'Challa awoke from his burial and told Zuri that his father was in the ancestral plane. Council with Zuri Following his reunion with T'Chaka in the ancestral plane, T'Challa spoke with Zuri about how he became the Black Panther. He remembered watching his father rule as Black Panther, performing amazing feats, but was told by T'Chaka that he'd gotten too old for the mantle, and passed it down to his son so he could simply rule as king. However, Zuri claimed that the only reason T'Chaka had given it up was that he'd gotten too fat to fit the panther habit, much to both of their amusement. T'Challa then mournfully stated that he tried to keep his father from speaking in Vienna and questioned why his father abandoned the isolationist ideas he'd raised T'Challa to follow. Zuri responded by stating that time changed T'Chaka, causing him to look back on his actions in the past and attempt to correct them. Getting a message Having finished his coronation for today, T'Challa took the time to walk with Nakia on the streets of Golden City, wanting to have her stay there. However, she decided not to as she wanted to support his father, and that she isn't happy to abandon any other people that have nothing. T'Challa then asked what would Nakia do about Wakanda, and told him that they would provide aid, access to technology, and refuge to those who need it, using other countries as an example and to do better than them now. T'Challa rebuts Nakia's motive, saying that Wakanda would lose its way of life, despite how she tells him that the country can help refugees and protect themselves. T'Challa remarks that she would make a stubborn queen, but she responded by saying that she would make a great queen because of her stubbornness. T'Challa then took time to visit the border tribe to see how Wakabi was doing in his farm, looking at one of his white rhinoceros and commenting on how it's still growing with all the food it's consuming. T'Challa was asked if he and Nakia were working things through with each other, only for him to become silent about it. Having Wakabi telling him what was wrong, T'Challa was thinking about Nakia's idea of foreign aid, listening to Wakabi that if refugees gain access to the country, they'll bring their problems. After talking about aiding other countries with Wakabi, T'Challa was contacted by Okoye and greeted Wakabi as her love. She informed him that a misidentified Wakandan aircraft was stolen at the Museum of Great Britain, learning that Ulysses Claw had plans to sell it to an American buyer in South Korea. Inside the council, T'Challa decides to pursue Claw, promising Wakabi that he will kill him where he stands, proceeding with the mission. Upgrades Gaining information from Okoye about Ulysses' claw and his plan to sell Wakandan artifacts, T'Challa started his mission by deciding to go inside of Shuri's lab with his Dora Milaje beside him along the way. Once T'Challa entered inside the Great Mound where the lab is located, he greets the other guards who are protecting their doorways, seeing Shuri waiting for him and greeting him as a king. As Shuri was mockingly introducing her brother, T'Challa told her to stop it while chuckling with laughter and committed a handshake with her. T'Challa then got a tour around her lab, being shown new improvements to his equipment, such as a vibranium car that was sent to Busan to take on his upcoming mission. When Shuri asked who would be coming along with him on his mission, T'Challa responded that Okoye and Nakia would be with him, saying it would be fine to take his ex on the mission, considering that Shuri would be called for backup. Looking further into the lab, T'Challa was introduced to new communications devices with unlimited range, equipped with an audio surveillance system and new Kimoyo beads. T'Challa then asked what are the new sneakers that were being showcased, only to be made fun of for wearing royal sandals from Shuri. Despite being made fun of, T'Challa showed off his sandals, saying that he decided to go old school for his first day as king. Once he wore his new sneakers, T'Challa was impressed with how it was automated and soundproof, to which he was made fun of again by Shuri for calling them sneakers. Shuri then showcased the most significant change to his panther habit, which T'Challa told that his previous design was set for an update. Shuri countered that it was functional and it could be changed, making fun of him in that if people are shooting at him, he'd need to put on his helmet. T'Challa was then introduced to a model with a golden necklace, but T'Challa proposed the idea to not be seen. He decided to pick the model with a silver necklace. Shuri then asked T'Challa to summon the panther habit, letting it materialize, stored into the necklace when not in use. T'Challa was then asked to strike it, only for Shuri to angrily yell at him. T'Challa then noticed that the suit was glowing, informed that it can absorb damage and emit it back for redistribution. 
T'Challa was then asked to kick the panther habit again in the same spot. However, Shuri started to video record from her Kimoyo beads. Getting suspicious, T'Challa asked why she was recording him before he could kick the mannequin. After Shuri responded that it was only for research purposes, T'Challa proceeded to kick the model only for the kinetic energy to blow on impact, sending him flying. He demanded that the laughing Shuri delete the humiliating footage of him. Manhunt for Ulysses Claw Once he learned that Claw had stolen a vibranium artifact from the Museum of Great Britain and was planning to sell it on the black market, T'Challa traveled to Busan to arrest Claw. T'Challa then assigned Okoye to come along with the mission with Nakia in the car, arriving at South Korea. Getting out of the car, T'Challa arrived at a fish market that held a casino clubhouse behind the store owner's marketplace. Following Nakia, he listened to her talking to a woman who owned a fish market business, telling her to gain passage with her friends despite looking like she became too suspicious she would let them come into the casino. T'Challa went past a security check, walking inside the casino and focusing on the mission to find the buyer. T'Challa told Okoya to stay on lookout when they arrived and courted Nakia off to the staircase to talk closely about how the mission would proceed. When Okoye interrupted their conversation over the intercom, T'Challa and Nakia separated from each other, noticing Everett Ross, noting that this mission had gotten complicated. Surprised to find that Ross was Claw's buyer, T'Challa greeted and questioned Ross's motives. Ross pointed that he would not listen after knowing that he wore a bulletproof cat suit. Despite being confronted for his secret, T'Challa swore to him that Claw would be taken into custody by him. Telling him to stay away from Claw, T'Challa left the casino and stayed in the distance until Claw entered the room. Klaus returned to T'Challa and noted that the vibranium Claw managed to steal appeared to link back to what was being used by Ultron during the Battle of Sokovia. Promising that they could then discuss handing over Claw to T'Challa once the CIA was finished with him, but T'Challa refused to make the deal. Eventually, Claw arrived at the casino, surrounded by bodyguards who filled up the room as he went downstairs to make the exchange. T'Challa informs Okoye that Claw is with Ross, noticing more Americans surrounding Claw. T'Challa stood across the room to hear about the deal. Noticing a commotion, T'Challa tells Okoye to stand her ground and not bring attention to Claw's henchmen. However, she decided to fight, and T'Challa sees one of them landing on a pool table. The exchange was unexpectedly interrupted, resulting in T'Challa throwing one of Claw's bodyguards away to save Ross's back. Seeing this, T'Challa then apprehended one of Claw's henchmen and fought against multiple of them in the middle of the room. T'Challa looked over at the balcony to see Claw getting away from the scene. He leapt over the top and yelled at him for being a murderer. Once Claw shot at him with his sonic arm cannon, T'Challa got up from the ground. T'Challa called Shuri once he got out of the casino, telling her to drive and quickly equipped the new panther habit and backflipped onto the car. As he stood on the car, T'Challa was taken up for a ride, chasing one of Claw's henchmen and took a turn from the car once they noticed the lane with an intersection. Chasing Claw's henchmen outside their van, T'Challa pursued them through the back of the van with the help from Shuri to drive closer to it. While stopping the thugs, T'Challa ripped through the roof and threw one of the drivers onto the road, who was killed by Shuri on accident. Once he subdued the last henchman inside the car, T'Challa managed to hop onto the car and entered the freeway. Going onto a bridge, T'Challa saw one of the henchmen begin to shoot him, withstanding the bullets. T'Challa then listened to Shuri about how he was charged with kinetic energy and needed to release it. Having an idea, T'Challa told Shuri to drive past the other car and in front of the henchman's van. T'Challa managed to land onto the van and disable the ride with a kinetic pulse, doing a backflip and landing back on the car. Following the last vehicle, T'Challa prepared to kill Claw, noticing that he was in the passenger seat. Once Claw noticed him on the spot, T'Challa dodged away from the sonic cannon while the car was blown away. T'Challa landed onto the ceiling wall of a neon sign and leapt onto the side of the van, shoving his claws into the wheels, disabling them. T'Challa landed onto the ground as the van crashed towards a fruit market. After the van crashed, T'Challa madly walked up to Claw and equipped his claws, absorbing the blast with his panther habit and then ripping off Claw's prosthetic arm. Getting close, T'Challa yelled at Claw, telling him about the people he's killed. Being called a savage, T'Challa threatened Claw to kill him outright, but after Nakia arrived to see him and told him that hundreds of eyewitnesses are present, he then handed him over to Ross. Claw's escape. With Ulysses Claw finally in their custody, T'Challa decided to take him back to CIA South Korean black site to answer for his crimes. Taken into the interrogation room, T'Challa and Okoye looked after Claw as he was handcuffed to a chair from his hands and ankles. While Claw was mockingly kissing at their mirrored glass where he was standing, T'Challa listened to Everett Ross, who suggested that he speak with Claw for five minutes. Okoye spoke to T'Challa in Hasa about not leaving Claw with Ross, responding that he will take him to Wakanda after Ross is done with the questioning. Speaking in English again, T'Challa insisted that he be allowed to take Claw back to Wakanda once Ross has finished his interrogation, which Ross rejected. When Ross casually tapped T'Challa on his chest, Okoye threatened him in Hasa, telling T'Challa that she will impale him to his desk if he touches him. Leading Ross to go into the other room, T'Challa interrupted Ross before going inside, placing his hand onto his shoulder and thanked him for all his help with capturing Claw. 
Unbeknownst to Ross, T'Challa had secretly planted a listening device on the agent so he could listen to their conversation. In the room, Claw recommended that Ross put more trust in him rather than the Wakandans, which Ross dismissed before asking about Claw's prosthetic arm and where he had gotten it from. Claw explained that the arm was an old mining tool which he had modified. Listening further, T'Challa realizes that Claw is spilling out information about Wakanda that shouldn't be said. During his interrogation, Claw explained to Ross that Wakanda is not a third world country as everyone was led to believe, and that the vibranium he had stolen was insignificant to the mass amount that they possessed to date. Once Ross stepped out of the room, T'Challa was confronted over Claw's claims about Wakanda, being told at the UN that Claw had stolen all the vibranium that they had, although T'Challa had retorted such statements and was further questioned. As Ross confronted T'Challa about the truth of his country, he was informed by Nakia that an attack was being held at the moment, only for an explosion to hit near them in the interrogation room. When an armed gunman breached the wall of the interrogation room, he threw a grenade at the office. T'Challa equipped his panther habit to stop it from exploding. Once he stopped the grenade, T'Challa stood up to see that Claw was abducted. Noticing Claw escaping their grasp, T'Challa chased them only for one of them holding a grenade launcher and aimed it at T'Challa exploding on impact. After being saved by the blast in his suit, T'Challa hesitated after seeing a man wearing a Wakandan royal ring around his neck similar to his father's, allowing them to escape. Getting up from the ground, T'Challa was informed that Ross was shot in the spine. Looking back, he decided to go inside again. In the room, T'Challa returned to the others to find that Ross had been severely injured while protecting Nakia. He had dove on top of Nakia and taken a bullet in his spine. T'Challa used a Kimoyo bead to stabilize his wound. Understanding the risks of bringing a foreign agent into his home, T'Challa ordered Ross brought to Wakanda to heal him in gratitude for saving Nakia. Saving Agent Ross Despite Okoye's objections, T'Challa brought Everett Ross back to Wakanda, taking him inside the Royal Talon Fighter and traveling back to town. Taking him inside the Royal Talon Fighter Standing above Ross from his medical bed, T'Challa was asked by Okoye about how they should justify bringing him into the country. T'Challa responded that he cannot just let Ross die knowing that they could save him due to their medical advancements. Bringing Ross into Shuri's lab, T'Challa put Ross on the medical board and took him down the hallway with Okoye and Nakia beside him. Taking him into her care, Shuri looked at Ross and was quite pleased that her brother brought another broken white boy for her to fix. T'Challa then placed him onto the table and let Shuri examine his spine with her Kimoyo bead. Analyzing Ross's x-ray scan, T'Challa was informed that he would survive the injuries. Noticing a call, T'Challa walked over to Wakabi, who arrived for Ulysses Claw's return for his crimes. When asked if he brought Claw, T'Challa told Wakabi that Claw had slipped through their fingers. Seeing Wakabi disappointed, T'Challa was then told that when his father took over as king for 30 years, he did nothing and having his friend would be different. Watching Wakabi leave, T'Challa was distraught on how close he had been to apprehending Claw. Skeletons in the Closet T'Challa confronted Zuri and demanded the truth about N'Jobu, whom T'Chaka said disappeared one day. He went on to explain that the arrival of a man wearing his grandfather's royal ring who helped Ulysses Claw escape from capture. Zuri, hesitant, stated that he had promised T'Chaka, the former king, that he would not tell of N'Jobu's fate, but T'Challa furiously stated that he is the current king of Wakanda. Reluctantly, Zuri explained that N'Jobu fell in love with an American woman while on a war dog assignment and was discovered through Zuri to have hired Claw less than 30 years ago to steal vibranium from the country to aid in the civil unrest in America after witnessing the tragedies happening to the African Americans there. N'Jobu was upset that T'Chaka couldn't understand the need to share the rare metal with the rest of the Africans in the world. When T'Chaka ordered his brother to return and face punishment, N'Jobu pulled a gun on Zuri for betraying him, but was quickly disarmed and killed by T'Chaka, leaving the king heartbroken, ordering Zuri to keep his actions a secret. Zuri explained that T'Chaka knew of N'Jobu's child with the American woman, but decided to leave the boy behind to maintain the lie that N'Jobu disappeared. T'Challa was left appalled by his father's action of lying about his uncle and orphaning his cousin. Sitting near a cliff with Nakia, T'Challa talked to her about his father's killing his uncle and leaving his cousin, a child behind with nothing, questioning why he would do such a thing. T'Challa was told by Nakia that no man is perfect. T'Challa realizes that his father never gave him a proper burial after his uncle betrayed their family, thinking he must have created something even worse. Despite his concern, Nakia advises T'Challa that he must not let his father's mistakes determine what T'Challa will do as king. Having a call from his Kimoyo bead, T'Challa was informed by Shuri that she had some important news that he must attend to at the lab. Having been joined by Everett Ross and Shuri, T'Challa listened to the group on everything he knew of Eric Stevens' background as a member of a highly trained section of the United States Navy SEALs, where he got a reputation as a killer, nicknamed Killmonger. While Ross explained and the other Wakandans listened closely, T'Challa begins looking at Killmonger's record. Meeting Eric Killmonger 
Returning to the Golden City, T'Challa held a meeting with the Tribal Council when Eric Killmonger was brought up to the council with Wakabi, who was presented with Ulysses Claw's corpse at the border of Wakanda, much to T'Challa's surprise. Once Killmonger was invited to speak, T'Challa was told that he is standing in the room, further noting that he had just served justice to Wakandans by killing Claw, who had been responsible for the previous attack on Wakanda and had stolen Vibranium, telling the council that he was able to deliver justice to the country. Angered by this insult, T'Challa got up from his throne and personally confronted Killmonger, walking up to him followed closely by Okoye. T'Challa pointedly clarified that he doesn't care about him bringing Claw, and the only reason he didn't kill him where he stands is that he knew who Killmonger really was. Asking a question, T'Challa listened to Killmonger, saying that he wanted the throne. Noticing the council was sitting down comfortably, Killmonger told T'Challa that 2 billion people all over the world that look like his ethnicity, saying their lives are a lot harder and Wakanda has the tools to liberate. T'Challa then asked for what kind of tools Killmonger wants, abruptly being told that it was vibranium. Aggressively, T'Challa responded that he will wage war on the world. T'Challa would counter that it's not Wakanda's way to be judge, jury, and executioner for people who are not their own. Killmonger retorted by saying that all life started right on the continent of Africa, and all people should be his people. T'Challa responded that he is not king of all people, only a king of Wakanda, telling him it was his responsibility to make sure that his people are safe and that Vibranium does not fall into the hands of a person like Killmonger. Demanding the king to ask his name, T'Challa dismisses Killmonger's request and told his guards to take him away. However, when the River Tribe Elder asked for Killmonger's identity, Killmonger said that his name was N'Jadaka and was son of N'Jobu taking T'Challa by surprise. This was further evidenced by Wakabi showing his ring. T'Challa was challenged for the throne and the Black Panther mantle. Pondering on the idea, T'Challa decided to accept the challenge, Killmonger's challenge. As they prepared for the duel, T'Challa and Killmonger were both taken to Warrior Falls, where Killmonger was then given his spear and sword, while the tribal council watched closely. Zuri used a potion to strip T'Challa's powers of the Black Panther's strength, leaving them on equal footing for the challenge. Once he stood back up, T'Challa gave Killmonger one final chance to lay down his weapons so they could handle the situation a different way. Instead, Killmonger then removed his bulletproof vest and shirt, revealing his tribal crocodile scarring, and told him how he had lived his entire life for this one moment, noting that he had killed all across the world, including Afghanistan, Iraq, and Africa, just so he could kill T'Challa. With everything in place, Zuri then announced the challenge would begin, as T'Challa immediately began on the defensive, as Killmonger attacked him by swinging his weapons, landing a deadly blow against him. All of Killmonger's military training allowed him to push him back, and T'Challa soon found that his skills with the tribal weapons took the advantage as he managed to lock Killmonger onto a block and held him back, using his shield to defend himself. As Killmonger became frustrated, T'Challa endured several heavy strikes that were landed against him repeatedly in an attempt to beat him into submission. However, T'Challa was able to use all of Killmonger's rage against him, knocking him off balance and onto his back, telling Killmonger to yield. After Killmonger refused to back down once he got back onto his feet, T'Challa continued gaining the advantage as he sliced Killmonger across the face with a non-fatal strike. When Killmonger stood back up, T'Challa continued to gain the upper hand. Eventually though, Killmonger was able to land a heavy kick and managed to slice T'Challa across his inner thigh. Once he was hurt, T'Challa was beaten down before being sliced clean across the chest and arm. When T'Challa then attempted to punch Killmonger, T'Challa was easily beaten down in front of his horrified family. Killmonger then raised his blade and prepared to execute T'Challa, telling him that it would be revenge for T'Chaka killing his own father. Before Killmonger could deliver the final blow, Zuri intervened, claiming that he was the one responsible for his father's death and that he should take his life instead. Despite that, T'Challa told Zuri not to stop the duel, and Killmonger happily obliged. Distraught over Zuri's untimely death, T'Challa lunged at Killmonger once more but missed. As Killmonger stood over, T'Challa was now unable to get up, as he called out to those watching and claimed that T'Challa would never be able to lead them, and was unworthy of being Black Panther. Once he finally gathered enough strength to fight back, T'Challa was picked up and thrown off the side of Warrior Falls. Saved by the Jabari tribe, flowing down the water, T'Challa was found in the Jabari land in the freezing rivers where their fishermen were doing labor and brought him back to their domain. M'Baku decided to save his life as repayment for his mercy at the falls earlier. Unconscious, T'Challa was in a comatose state and covered in snow before almost dying. Once Nakia, Ramonda, Shuri, and Everett Ross had escaped from Killmonger's consolidated power, they were taken into M'Baku's chamber and attempted to give away one of the heart-shaped herbs. M'Baku had then 
then shown T'Challa in his comatose condition, stabilized by the surrounding snow. Ramonda remembered to use the herb to bring him back. Awakening in the ancestral plane, T'Challa was greeted by T'Chaka and was invited to join him and the rest of his ancestors. Instead of staying with his father, T'Challa was furious at T'Chaka for what happened to his uncle and cousin, and angered by the other Black Panthers for how their strict isolationism has led to suffering around the world. T'Challa declared his work wasn't done yet and must take the mantle back and right the wrongs of his father. In the brisk of the cold climate, T'Challa woke up to the relief of his loved ones, looking at everyone and asking for a blanket as they laughed and smiled from his remark. Agreement with M'Baku Once he'd rested in M'Baku's land until morning, T'Challa was informed that Killmonger was reigning supreme in Wakanda, having the full support of the military, and burned the Garden of the Heart-Shaped Herb, as he was trained to destabilize foreign countries. Informed that their weapons will be sent all over the world, T'Challa declared that he must get his family out of Wakanda safely, saying that his challenge will have to continue. Arguing that his duty is to keep his people safe, T'Challa responds that if Killmonger gets control over their technology, nowhere will be safe. When Shuri got up from her seat, T'Challa was given his silver necklace that will equip his panther habit, saying that the Black Panther lives and will be right there beside him, as Nakia and Everett Ross decide to join in the fight alongside him. As they have a moment of uniting as a team, T'Challa was caught off guard when M'Baku was yawning very loudly, and asking them if they were done talking before taking action. Ordering his family, Nakia and Ross to leave the room for privacy, T'Challa thanked M'Baku for saving his life, as they both gained a truce once M'Baku expressed he spared his life in their duel for the throne. Once they were settled down, T'Challa requested that his mother stay with this land and that he and the rest of the Jabari tribe would help overthrow Killmonger. M'Baku agreed with this statement in a serious manner, but quickly declined. Saying that he is the first king to come for his tribe in centuries, M'Baku questions what he spoke for his tribe. T'Challa retorted that he can't speak for all the kings in the past, but with Killmonger on the throne, he promised who will be next in the group of people to overthrow. With M'Baku declining to help, T'Challa and his group left the tribe, with the panther habit prepared for the coming battle. Battle for Wakanda Preparing for battle, T'Challa went over to Wakanda while Nakia, Shuri, and Everett Ross secretly go over there to sneak around the Great Mound. As Killmonger and the Border Tribe prepared to deliver vibranium weapons to war dogs around the world, T'Challa destroyed the aircraft, crashing it into the ground. With the aircraft on fire, T'Challa emerged from the debris and removed his mask to reveal his identity. T'Challa then walked over to the field and yelled at Killmonger, shouting his real name and that he never yielded nor was killed in his challenge with him. Despite that, Killmonger stated that the ritual combat was over. Killmonger ordered Wakabi to kill T'Challa and the border tribe began to charge at him. At this defiance of the challenge, Okoye and the Dora Malaya considered Killmonger's claim to the throne now forfeited and turned against him in defense of T'Challa as the rightful king. Black Panther called Shuri to move along inside the lab and begin to fight the border tribe. When the border tribe used defensive shields, T'Challa jumped over them and used his kinetic pulse to release, resulting into exploding on impact, grabbing onto the soldier's sonic spears and throwing it at the aircraft. As the destruction started to brew more attention, half of the Dora Malaya were sent down to battle out Wakabi's men, fighting for the king. On the brink of the battle, T'Challa subdued many of Wakabi's soldiers that were attacking him. As the battle went on, T'Challa took off his mask and confronted Wakabi, telling him to stop his soldiers from fighting, but he refused to listen. As the border tribe members shout over the air horn, the white rhinoceros begin to huddle in groups and crash into the broken aircraft that T'Challa recently destroyed. After the rhinos hit several Dora Malaya members, T'Challa chased one of them down and grabbed its horn, subduing it to the ground as the piece of debris pinned it down. Continuing in battle, T'Challa fought against several of Wakabi's soldiers until one of the rhinos hit him so hard that he flew across the field and landed onto the ground near a rock. As Killmonger, wearing the other panther habit, defeated Okoye and three of the Dora Malaya members, he turned his attention to Shuri. Seeing this, T'Challa released his kinetic pulse and began to charge at Killmonger, tackling him, causing both to fall into the Great Mound. As they proceeded to fall several stories, T'Challa began to trade blows with Killmonger, resulting in him landing onto the railroad of the Wakandan Maglev train. On the platform, T'Challa dodged an incoming attack by Killmonger and fought on the tracks of one of the Vibranium transport trains. T'Challa asked Shuri to activate the train, knowing it would activate the sonic stabilizers, rendering his and Killmonger's suits useless from time to time. After the railroad was activated, T'Challa was able to swiftly avoid the train while Killmonger began to attack him outright. As the two escaped from the railroad, T'Challa noticed that his suit was tearing and repairing, along with Killmonger's as well. As Killmonger began to denounce his reign, T'Challa countered that he just wanted Wakanda to be like 
like the people he hates by dividing and conquering a foreign land. When Killmonger tried to rebut, T'Challa responded that he will become just like his oppressors and will destroy the world, Wakanda included. As Killmonger cried out that the world took everything away from him, T'Challa threatened that he would become just like those who took things away from him, tracking anyone down who will ever think about being loyal to them and killing them just like Zuri. Knowing that he'll never stop murdering the one he loved, T'Challa screamed at Killmonger and began to charge, continuing to fight each other. As the fight started to become more frantic, T'Challa fought against Killmonger, gaining the upper hand by throwing him off the railroad and ended up hurting him while trying to stay at bay. Once Killmonger grabbed a short spear, T'Challa avoided his strikes and the duel continued. T'Challa was pushed back, trying to switch the blade towards him only to move over to his side. When the train came through, T'Challa punched the knife away and in the air, he rolled over, catching the spear and fatally stabbed Killmonger in the heart. Knowing the fight was over, T'Challa listened to Killmonger's memories about his father and how he told him that Wakanda was the most beautiful place in the world. After this, T'Challa helped Killmonger go to the top of the mine to watch the sunset from a cliff. While there, T'Challa offered to heal Killmonger but Killmonger refused, saying he would rather die than be imprisoned, pulling the spear out of his body and bleeding to death, giving the world resources. After reclaiming Wakanda, T'Challa buried Eric Killmonger, as the rest of the Dora Malaya and the Border Tribe settled down after their battle was over, stopping the weapons that were meant to be sent out to the world. T'Challa reassigned himself as King of Wakanda and went to reclaim his throne. As Wakanda was finally prospering, T'Challa went over to the streets of the Golden City to meet up with Nakia at a stairwell, deciding to talk about their recent actions. After greeting the locals that were walking up the stairs, T'Challa proceeded to thank Nakia for her actions by saving him and his family. Nakia then responded that it was her duty to fight for what she loved before stumbling her words and going towards T'Challa. Once she continued on, T'Challa interrupted her sentence by kissing her and tries to rationalize. After making a remark, T'Challa was then kissed by Nakia once more, and he asked Nakia to stay, knowing a way to still fulfill her calling, pleading for her to stay in the city. Deciding to stay there, T'Challa was tenderly kissed by Nakia again, settling their relationship. Later on, T'Challa and Shuri went over to Oakland in California and looked at the old apartment building of his uncle. Shuri would remark on what T'Challa said by going to California for the first time. She thought of Coachella or Disneyland. She asked why they were here in the first place, and T'Challa told Shuri that this is where their father killed Njobu, informing her that it will not be torn down. Breaking the news to her, T'Challa told Shuri that he bought the old apartment building and a couple of other landmarks, saying that it will be Wakanda's first Wakandan international outreach center. T'Challa also announced that Shuri would be the head of the Science and Information Exchange, leaving her in disbelief. He activated a new royal talent fighter from up in the sky as a gif. As the children noticed the ship gawking at the sight of it, and planning to sell parts of it until Shuri told the kids that it was hers, and when asked where she came from, she told them that she was from Wakanda, much to their confusion. As T'Challa leaned over the fence, he was asked by one boy with braids on his hair if the ship on the court was his or not, and later realizing that he is likely the owner of the jet, asked him who he was, smiling at him. Joining the United Nations Heading over to the United Nations, T'Challa walked into the Vienna International Center with Okoye, Nakia, and Ayo beside him as he entered. When Everett Ross arrived to meet up, T'Challa was greeted by him before being asked for a private conversation, to which T'Challa asked them to give him space. T'Challa listened to Ross's recommendation that he should not reveal their wealth and power to the United Nations, fearing the response could be dangerous. T'Challa, however, insisted to Ross that he would no longer rule out of fear like his father had done, believing that they should lead by example. When Ross heard this, T'Challa's decision was accepted and he went off with his people to let him make his speech. Before leaving, however, T'Challa was wished good luck in Hosa. However, he mispronounced some words which caused Okoya and Ayo to laugh alongside Nakia, while Ross insisted that he practice his phrase. T'Challa thanked him in Hosa. Entering the room with photographers and cameramen on him, T'Challa then gave his speech in which he established full relations between Wakanda and the rest of the world, promising to share their vibranium and technology. Continuing his speech, T'Challa spoke about Wakanda no longer watching from the shadows, and that people will work to be an example of how human beings on Earth should treat each other, with no illusions of division threatening our existence. Focusing on every listener, T'Challa told the public that a connection between other countries is now more in need than ever. When one of these senators questioned what a small country in Africa with no resources could do, he gave a speech that officially ended Wakanda's isolation and proclaimed all of Earth as one tribe, much to the utter amazement of the rest of the world who were watching, providing amnesty. T'Challa then returned home to Wakanda, bringing with him Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes. Offering the latter asylum, he informed the pair that the best chance of having the Winter Soldier programming removed was for Barnes to return to cryosleep stasis, which Barnes agreed to do. After Shuri explained how she intended to remove the Hydra programming, Barnes willingly let himself freeze in a cryo chamber until the Wakanda Design Group scientists could find a way to cure him of the brainwashing. 
Rogers warned T'Challa that forces of opposition would come and declare war on Wakanda for allowing Barnes to take refuge, to which T'Challa replied that they could try as the two overlooked the landscape of the kingdom's mountains. Becoming a father T'Challa and Nakia conceived a son whom they named after T'Challa himself, with the two of them agreeing to keep his existence a secret to take away the pressures of the throne and royalty, with Nakia raising him in Haiti, while T'Challa stayed in Wakanda to continue his duties as king. Recruiting Bucky Barnes Following the attacks by Black Order in New York City and Scotland, the remaining Avengers on Earth traveled to Wakanda and appeared to T'Challa for help in extracting the Mind Stone from Vision's head before Thanos' expected invasion of Earth. Agreeing to help, T'Challa ordered his followers to equip Bucky Barnes with a new prosthetic arm. Alongside with Barnes, Okoye told T'Challa that the Royal Guard and the Dormalaye have been alerted, including the Border Tribe and the Jabari Tribe as well. T'Challa told Okoye that despite Barnes being tired of war, he has rested long enough. T'Challa visited Barnes and gave him a new prosthetic arm. Noticing the arm, Barnes asked him where the fight is, and T'Challa responded that it was on the way. Preparation for Battle Shortly after T'Challa recruited Bucky Barnes, he waited for the Avengers' arrival in their Quinjet. Walking towards the helipad, T'Challa was asked by Okoye that while opening to the rest of the world, she did not expect a war, to which he responded with a question with what she had in mind, talking about the Olympics and Starbucks. Once the Avengers arrived in Wakanda, T'Challa was reunited with Steve Rogers, being thanked for his help in securing Vision. T'Challa was also introduced to Bruce Banner, who was tricked by James Rhodes to bow to him, telling him that his people do not do that sort of thing. Walking towards the city, T'Challa questions how big of an assault the army can expect. Banner responded that it's going to be quite a big assault, and tells the Avengers that they will have the Wakandan Royal Guard, the Border Tribe, the Thoramalaye, and Barnes by their side. As he led the Avengers into the Citadel, T'Challa tasked Shuri with extracting the Mind Stone from Vision's forehead. Once Shuri notices that there are more than two trillion neurons there, T'Challa was informed by her that it will take time to disassemble each part. Alerted by Okoye's Kimoyo bead, T'Challa rallied the Wakandans in order to fight the members of the Black Order, knowing that they will come to Wakanda for the stone. Battle of Wakanda Onto the Wakandan battlefield, T'Challa rode alongside the carriers that are hovering over the ground with Wakandan soldiers and Natasha Romanov, Rogers, and Barnes on board, while War Machine and Falcon kept the pace overhead, and Banner wears the Hulkbuster armor. As the carrier pilot swerved to stop and the Dora Malaye had joined the ranks, T'Challa dropped off from his ride and met M'Baku to thank him for his cooperation. Walking toward the edge of the barrier, T'Challa, Rogers, and Romanov stood between where Proxima Midnight and Kull Obsidian are in front of them. As Midnight draws her sword, T'Challa and his allies were threatened by her, responding to her that Thanos will have nothing but dust and blood on his hand, only for her to send multiple Outriders from their Outrider dropship. T'Challa went back to lead the Wakandans in the war cry, telling them to hold fast as the Outriders bound towards the barrier and Midnight signaled to attack. Once the enemies appeared, T'Challa signaled to shoot them en masse, though most of them could not penetrate Wakanda's protective force field. To protect them from flanking their position and reaching vision, T'Challa ordered the shield wall lowered to funnel the enemies towards them and began to attack. As the Outriders are coming toward them, T'Challa and Rogers rapidly ran ahead due to their enhancements and leaped into battle. Over his intercom, T'Challa told Shuri on how much time she had left to fix Vision, responding that she barely begun, asking her to pick up the pace. As the battle continued on, a large beam of light lands in the middle of the field, revealing Thor, Groot, and Rocket Raccoon. T'Challa paused in shock and surprise. Upon witnessing Obsidian killing several Wakandans, T'Challa leapt onto him and used all of his collected kinetic energy to punch him. When the disturbance reached the edge of the trees, a vast number of Threshers began to shred everything in their path, prompting T'Challa to command his army to fall back. Though many people died, T'Challa and his Wakandan army fought valiantly and killed many of Thanos' forces, with Thor having to arrive alongside them to help turn the tide of battle. Thanos' Victory as T'Challa and the remaining Avengers had gathered near a forest, they discovered a disturbance coming towards them. As the group became silent enough, Thanos teleported himself to Earth and arrived in Wakanda to personally retrieve the Mind Stone. Once Thanos stood and observed, Captain America ordered the group to stay sharp and attack him, as Thanos' domination over the fabrics of reality given to him by the nearly completed Infinity Gauntlet, T'Challa attempted to attack him with the use of his kinetic energy pulse to implode onto his opponent. However, this had little effect and the Mad Titan easily grabbed T'Challa by the shoulder with his Infinity Gauntlet hand and punched him with so much force that all the energies in his panther habit were expelled, knocking him out instantly. Although they bought enough time for Scarlet Witch to destroy the Mind Stone, Thanos used the Time Stone to undo her actions and retrieved the stone from Vision, destroying him. With a snap of his fingers, Thanos' plan came to fruition as half of all sentient life across the whole universe began to disintegrate into dust. T'Challa held out his hand to bring Okoye up, only for him to disintegrate in front of her horrified eyes. Battle of Earth 
Five years later, as a result of the blip, T'Challa was restored to life. Shortly after, he, along with his restored sister and the Wakandan armies, were recruited by the Masters of the Mystic Arts to join the battle against an alternate Thanos and his army. He was reunited with Okoye, and she and his sister walked alongside him through an interdimensional portal to the destroyed Avengers compound in New York. He shared a glance with a battle-weary Steve Rogers, who showed his relief at their arrival. T'Challa then rallied his armies in battle as they emerged through the portal. When all their allies had emerged, Rogers rallied them to attack, and T'Challa joined the leading charge on the aliens. During the battle, Rogers ordered the Nano Gauntlet to be brought to the Quantum Tunnel within Luis's van. T'Challa located the gauntlet and used his kinetic energy pulse to rescue Clint Barton from a horde of Outriders. He then acknowledged Barton, calling him by his first name, something he learned during the airport clash, and told him to give him the gauntlet. T'Challa then tried to reach the van but was knocked down by Thanos' double-edged sword. T'Challa was then charged by Thanos but was saved by Scarlet Witch. T'Challa then made another attempt to secure the gauntlet only to be ensnared by Ebony Maw's telekinesis, negating his suit's ability to channel kinetic energy. As Ma nearly claimed the gauntlet, T'Challa threw it to Spider-Man who swung past him. The battle ended when Tony Stark used the Infinity Stones to wipe out Thanos and his army, though at the cost of his own life. T'Challa stood next to Peter Quill and watched as the aliens disintegrated. After the battle, T'Challa returned home and reunited with his mother. He resumed his duties as king and one night watched with his sister and mother from the Citadel as celebrations went on in the Golden City at their loved one's return. A week later, he, his sister, and Okoye went back to New York and attended Stark's funeral at his house. Training with Dora Malaye as T'Challa resumed his duties as king, he also returned as the Black Panther. He trained with the Dora Malaye with Asada and Ayo watching. Incurable Disease In 2024, T'Challa suffered from an incurable illness. He went to Haiti and informed Nakia so she and their son could be prepared for his death. He also told her to stay there and not attend his funeral. When he returned to Wakanda, Shuri did everything she could to recreate the heart-shaped herb and its healing properties after they were burned by Killmonger, but could not complete the project in time, resulting in his death. Aggression of Other World Powers Due to the unexpected death of King T'Challa, some countries saw the loss of Wakanda's protector as the country being weak. This resulted in attempts to steal Vibranium by force, although Queen Ramonda and the Dora Malaye were able to thwart them. Title of Black Panther A year after T'Challa's passing, Namor and the Talokan kidnapped Shuri and Riri Williams, and revealed they planned to wage war on the surface world with the help of Wakanda. However, when Wakanda declined, and Nakia killed one of the Talokan in order to help Shuri and Williams escape, Namor attacked Wakanda, resulting in the death of Queen Ramonda. Shuri eventually went on to recreate the heart-shaped herb and became the next Black Panther to enact revenge on Namor for killing her mother. However, she spared his life and continued T'Challa's legacy of nobility and the Black Panther. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.